UCLA football might be in the market for a new defensive coordinator. Clippers players are rallying behind adding Russell Westbrook. And D'Angelo Russell is telling Laker fans, he's telling everybody, he's a man, he's a man, he's a man. Yes, I've had a little too much to drink this morning. Whatever. Good morning. I'm James. This is your daily dose of sports and snark for the greatest sports city in the world, Los Angeles. This is the Faithful Angelino's Morning Report. It is February 11, 2023, Saturday morning, Premier League morning, hence copious amounts of alcohol. If you like the content we put out about LA sports, clickety-clack the like button, clickety-clack the subscribe button. There's a notifications bell. Hit that. It'll let you know when we drop new content. Sharing is caring. Let people know we exist. And by all means, comment. I promise I am not leading with Russell Westbrook today. Before we go through the news and notes, a quick look at the scoreboard. Brandon Boston scores 20 points to lead team load management, but the Clippers wind up losing. Milwaukee comes into LA. They sweep both the Lakers and Clippers. Last night over the Clippers, 119-106. Meanwhile, today, the new look Lakers are in Golden State at 530. Seventh ranked UCLA will play Oregon at seven. The stakes are high for the Oregon Ducks. They upset USC earlier this week because they are trying to build an NCAA resume. The Bruins need to keep their eyes open on this one. USC is at Oregon State. That game is at three and Pittsburgh is playing the Kings tonight at 7.30. This game matters because not just the game, but what they're gonna do beforehand. They are retiring Dustin Brown's jersey number tonight. They are also unveiling a statue of the former Kings captain in front of Crypto.com Arena. He was the captain of two Stanley Cup winning teams. He was one of the league's most relentless hitters. He's also the guy with the seventh jersey number retired by the Kings and the third Kings player with a statue. More statues than... St Look, I love the Kings. I've been a Kings fan since I was a kid. But more statues than Stanley Cups, right? Luke Robitaille, Wayne Gretzky, Dustin Brown. Are you like me? Are you starting to think that the Kings are a little bit too aggressive in the statue game? That Crypto.com is a little too aggressive in the statue game? I mean, how? at what point are there going to be so many statues in front of Crypto.com Arena that you can't even get into the place? Like you look inside and Crypto.com Arena is going to look like what it looked like during the COVID lockdown era. Nobody's going to be able to get in. You, and then you retire Brown's jersey. He's a seventh Kings player retired. You know you're going to retire the numbers and probably give statues to Drew Doughty, Andre Kopitar, Jonathan Quick. The Kings aren't even going to be able to give players numbers in the future. It's going to be like symbols on the keyboard is the only thing they can fit. Or what Prince used to call himself. But let's get to today's news. Defensive coordinator Bill McGovern, according to sources, will likely be replaced as UCLA's defensive coordinator next year. Sources are telling that to 24-7 Sports. Now, it might be because McGovern, who has only coached the Bruins' defense for one year, missed five games due to an undisclosed illness. We don't know what he has. And obviously, look, there are bigger things than sports. Your health actually does matter. I have not been able to verify this story yet outside of 24-7 Sports. But if it is true, could it be that the Bruins might be forced to finally take defense seriously? Chip Kelly actually, for once in his Bruins career, has been joining his assistants on the high school recruiting trail. Now, McGovern came to Westwood with experience not only in college, but with three NFL teams. McGovern signed a two-year contract last year that was worth about $1.8 million. But the results of his one year at UCLA? The defense actually regressed. They allowed more points per game. They allowed more in terms of yards per play than the man he replaced, Jerry Azanaro, who, for all we know, is still running for his life to try to escape Bruin fans who are mad at him. Will the Bruins now finally be forced to take defense seriously. Let me know what you think in the comments thread. Like I said, the story, 
I have not been able to verify it with more than one source, but 24-7 Sports reports that Bill McGovern might be being replaced next year. While it is true that the Clippers and Russell Westbrook have mutual interest, that would be if Utah buys out the former Lakers guard and former MVP's contract, ESPN's Adrian Wojnarowski considers Chicago to be the front runner to sign him because of the man's history with Bulls coach uh, Billy Donovan, Donovan coach Westbrook when he was in Oklahoma City. Now, having said that, both Paul George and Marcus Morris have publicly lobbied the Clippers to pursue Westbrook after Friday's loss to Milwaukee. George played alongside with Westbrook, also in with the Thunder. Incoming Lakers guard D'Angelo Russell has re-arrived, and he told reporters yesterday that he is a different guy than the one who snitched on Nick Young back in the day. Repeated that he is an alpha, that he is a grown man now. He's a man, he's a man, he's a man. Now granted, he will turn 27 by the end of February, so let's all hope that he's a man. Quote, a lot has happened since I've been here, right? I was an all-star, went to the playoffs. I've done a lot of things individually. So to come back with that resume, I feel like that helps the team, unquote. He said other things that might be considered a sign of maturity. He admitted that he didn't really appreciate what he had in his rookie season, which also turned out to be Kobe Bryant's last season. And that might have been because he was hanging out more with Swaggy P than Kobe, wouldn't you say? Look, I'll just be honest with you. He's saying all the right things. Perhaps he produces. And we should all hope he produces because the Lakers cannot afford to play around anymore. We have no choice but to give D'Angelo Russell the benefit of the doubt. The Lakers season literally depends on it now. Speaking of playing around, ESPN Village Idiot Jalen Rose accused Anthony Davis of having beef with LeBron James because Davis sat on the bench while fans were celebrating James breaking the all-time scoring record. Rose accused Anthony Davis of jealousy. And so they go to Davis and ask what he thought. And Davis is saying, quote, we were losing to the Oklahoma City Thunder, a game we needed, and I was pissed off that we were losing. It's just that simple, unquote. Exactly. Exactly. You have plenty of time to party it up with James after the game. Davis knew what the stakes of the game was. You think either LeBron James or Anthony Davis enjoys being two of the top, what, 15, 20 players in the game and they don't make the playoffs? You don't think that that matters to Anthony Davis? I'm telling you, the next intelligent thing that Jalen Rose says might be the first intelligent thing that Jalen Rose says. This is a guy who went on Celebrity Jeopardy and the clue was, quote, this is a New England state, that? And you know what Jalen Rose's answer was? What is New England? New England is not a state, dude. They dumb down the questions on Celebrity Jeopardy, right? And they go to Final Jeopardy that night. His opponents are plus 25,000, plus 30,000. He's in the red by almost $2,000. That's how stupid Jalen Rose is. And by the way, I really want to get a side note out of my uh, system here. I've had this channel for almost a year. The anniversary of this channel is February 19th. All of that time, I've been telling you guys, I'm a former scribe. These are the people you can trust. These are the people you can't trust regarding trades, regarding free agency, regarding the draft. All of that hot air, all of that blather online. And who predicted Russell Westbrook for a pick and D'Angelo Russell? Nobody. Who predicted Rui Hachimura was coming to the Lakers? Nobody. Who predicted Patrick Beverly for Mo Bamba? Exactly. Exactly. So every time you hear about a hot trade rumor, just roll on by. It is not that big a deal. Rams assistant head coach Thomas Brown was in the running for the head coaching gig at Houston. He missed that shot. However, a return to the Rams is not a fait accompli. CBS Sports reports that Brown interviewed for the offensive coordinator gig in Tampa Bay. The Bucks moved on from offensive coordinator Byron Leftwich. Heads up, Coach Brown. They also moved on from Tom Brady. So there's that, right? 
I mean, you ever, you ever notice the interview process for football coaches? They'll stand a prospective coach next to a dry erase board, hand him a Sharpie, and tell him to diagram plays. How do you diagram plays for a team that does not have a starting quarterback? Good luck, coach. Uh, uh, coach, uh, what do you re recommend on first and 10? Uh, no quarterback? I don't know, the Wildcats? It's third and eight. What would you do? I don't know, bring back the single wing, the, the, the flying wedge. Coach Brown, man, there are better jobs out there. You might want to lob a text to Sean McVay. I'm just saying. The Chargers have interviewed Raiders assistant Fred Walker to become the quarterback's coach. Also, in bigger news, they have rescued a coach from the Cleveland Browns. Jeff Howard is coming to L.A. to coach inside linebackers, and I applaud the Bolts for doing so because in that ass-backward hellscape known as Ohio, the Browns had the Howard coach defensive backs and coordinate the passing game. Defensive backs, passing game. How would you like to work for a company that says, hey, everybody, we're going to bring in this new guy. He's coordinating sales of microchips, and he makes bowls of the best spaghetti that you've ever had in your life. That's how the Browns treat their assistant coaches. Ass backward, making no sense. The Dodgers have signed outfielder David Peralta, which is a curious, Peralta, which is a curious move among many curious moves by the Dodger front office this offseason. The only reason that I'm not saying that I hate this move is because LA's front office keeps reaching into their backside and instead of pulling out turd, they wind up pulling out gold bullion. I have no idea how it happens. I will tell you why I don't like it and I expect to be wrong. I don't like it because Peralta pretty much can only play left field for one. It also means that the Dodgers were looking for an insurance policy because it stands to reason prospect James Outman might wind up starting the year in the minor leagues. I think they don't trust Outman. Last year, by the way, Peralta played for Arizona and Tampa Bay. Two very hitter-friendly ballparks, and now he's going to Chavez Ravine. Not so hitter-friendly. LAFC has finally addressed the midfield by adding Timothy Tillman from a team in Germany's second league. He's 24. He's a product of Bayern uh, Munich's academy. Honestly, probably a smart move. There were big names being bandied about to play striker for LAFC. But you had a threadbare midfield. At some point, you actually had to address it. LAFC finally did. USC football spring practice will begin March 4th. The assumption is that practices will be closed to the public except for the spring game, which will be held at the Coliseum. But let me know what you think, because I'm so glad I'm finally not talking about Russell Westbrook with the very first thing. Do you believe that UCLA is moving on with trying to get a new defensive coordinator? Do you think that the Clippers have a shot at Russell Westbrook? Or do you actually believe that D'Angelo Russell has actually matured? Could be. I'm interested. And if you enjoyed this content, don't forget to subscribe to Faithful Angelinos. We're talking LA sports every single day here. Thank you for watching. I'm James. We'll be back tomorrow. Faithful Angelinos is a Kian Corte El Queso production. Take care.